Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Blood of Ares to debuff efficiency ratio for sub-city generals. Now when I was started out making this video, I wanted to make it super in-depth, break down everything, and I've recorded this a few times trying to do that, but I just haven't really liked the way it turned out for breaking it down super in-depth. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the numbers, how I got them, and then go over some recommendations that I have. The spreadsheets are going to be linked below. If you want to do a super in-depth breakdown of them, please use them for yourself. But this is just going to be a preliminary look at it. Now, you might already be familiar with this spreadsheet right here. This one is the basic subsidy generals. I've gone through and updated it. I believe I added one or two that I missed in my original video. These yellow columns here are the base skills for mounted, ground, ranged, and siege. These are the debuff numbers for each of them. This chart does not include any uh, any of the uh, effectiveness for like a subsidy gold production, training speed, none of that. This is just debuffs. These red columns right here, these are the full ascension, five stars, uh, same order as the other one. These blue columns here are the specialties that you can unlock with them. And then these columns here are the totals for everything. So this column, the total total, is the total overall buff added up for the specialty and five stars. And then for each respective category, there are the totals there, just to give you a general overview of them. Now, this tab right here, this is the B2B which is a blood to buff tab. What I did here was I took the free generals, broke them down into it. This one right here, this is their base skill. And this is the total buff that you get from the base skill. So nothing different from the original spreadsheet. The second one is what happens when you upgrade them to one star. This is the total buff you get. This is the amount of increase you get for that upgrade. This is the blood of Aries that it's going to cost, and this is the B2B number. What this number is, it is the blood of Aries cost divided by 40. So what this number tells us is with this 15.5, that means that to get 1% debuff, we need to spend 15.5 blood of Aries. So the lower this number is, the more cost efficient it is. And the same thing going down to two star, three star, four star, and then the five star upgrades. Now this number is helpful because it can give you a general idea of which upgrades are worth going for, which ones aren't as cost efficient, and how you should upgrade all your subsidy mayors uh, in that order. You're gonna be able to download the spreadsheet, so if you wanna calculate these numbers for a premium general that you're looking at, you can do that as well. It's pretty simple to run. You can find all the stats in game, so it's not too difficult. Now, this last tab is my recommendations. Obviously, this is just my personal opinion, but in my opinion, this is the most optimal way to go about it. This uh, box up here in black. So basically what I did was, for each category, I went and I asked myself the question, which of these generals do I think is the most efficient for that? So for debuffing mounted troops, I think that Margaret is the best base skill. For if you're only talking one stars and below, Margaret is still the best mounted troop debuffer. When you talk about the two star debuff, I think that a Margaret one star and a sexy two star are about equal. And I don't really think the Margaret two star is worth going for. Same story for the three star. I think a sexy three star and a Margaret one star are going to be about equal for buff debuffing the mounted and then once we get to four star and five star i think 6e is better than a four star or a five star for debuffing mounted than margaret is based on the cost efficiency and that's the same for each of these right here now this blue one right here this is which defense are we looking at and which general do i think is going to perform best for those uh star levels this first one is Bodica T1 slash other. 
Now, T1 is obviously going to be your T1 trap with flat refines on your general gear. I know a lot of people use Bodica for a T1 trap. Personally, I don't, wouldn't recommend that. I think she's better used as the mounted heavy defense with the percent refines for your mounted. It's more of a gambler's keep. You're either going to win big or you're going to take some heavy losses. So I'm not a big fan of Bodica for that, but because I know a lot of people use her, I included that in here. I think that for both instances, Jackson is going to be your best bet, uh, simply because he debuffs the ranged attack, and that's going to be our goal for these defenses, is we want our ranged, our uh, mounted troops to be as survivable as possible, and the best way to do that is going to be to debuff the ranged attack. Jackson doesn't get any extra buffs for debuffing the ranged attack until 4 star and 5 star, and so for that reason, I wouldn't upgrade him to 1, 2, or 3 star until you're ready to go all the way to 5 star. I don't think it's worth it. This one is for a Taylor T1 defense, which I think is a pretty solid defense overall. Uh, the thing you want to focus on for a Taylor defense, in my opinion, is going to be decreasing the siege attack because you want your archers to be a little bit more survival. Uh, for the base skill defensing siege, Armanius is going to be the best. Harold's pretty good at one star. Harold one star for the two star slot as well. And then once you get to 3 star, Catherine's going to be the best for debuffing that, up to 4 and 5 star. Now for a Richard T1 defense, you have a couple different options. The first one is you can go with general debuff overall and go with more of a Nero. Uh, or you can try and decrease more of the siege and ranged attack and go with Catherine. Catherine is a very solid general, but she is not good until you get her to at least 3 stars. And that's how I would recommend uh, the generals for these. Harold is also a pretty good option. Only up to one star, though. The second star may or may not be worth it based on your uses, but I don't think it's generally worth the second star on Harold. Uh, Leonidas, other. Now, Leonidas, if you're using him, you're probably not using the T1 trap. He's a premium, so it's going to be pretty expensive. You probably have pretty big buffs. So if we're going on a ground-heavy defense with Leonidas... We're going to want to decrease the mounted and ground and all of their stats, mainly the mounted, which obviously the best is going to be 60 for that. And these are the upgrade paths that I think are worth it, but just generally, I think you should just go for straight 60 overall. Now, these ones right here, these are the optimal cost effective way to upgrade these generals in what order so that you get the most out of your uh, resources. So if we're going for a Leonidas defense and we're upgrading 60, you should upgrade all of your 60s to 1 star. Upgrade them all to 2 star. Upgrade one of them to 3 star. Upgrade that same 3 star to 4 star and that 4 star to 5 star. And then you're going to start over again with a 2 star 60 to 3 to 4 to 5 until they're all 5 star. If you're using a Bodica defense and you want to use Jackson, you're going to upgrade them one at a time up to five stars. Don't go one star on each of them and then two star on each of them. That's not cost effective. Just straight up go one Jackson, one Thar, do five stars, and then do it one at a time. If you're running the Taylor, Richard, Catherine combo, because Catherine could be used for all of those, uh, I recommend using upgrading Harold to one star and then. Just keep all those heralds at one star, and then focus on Catherine. You're upgrading your Catherines to one through five stars, and then you're gonna recycle one herald to get replaced. So meaning you're gonna recover the blood of areas that you've invested in them. Which if you do it in the, if you upgrade them during the Trial of Knights event, you're gonna be able to get all of your bloody of areas back without any loss. So it's okay to put those upgrades into them in terms of cost efficiency. So basically, you just have the Herald 1 stars as a placeholder until you can replace them with a 5 star Catherine. If you're running a Richard slash Nero defense, upgrade them all to 1 star, all to 2 star. Then you're going to take one of them, put them to 3 star and 4 star. And then you're going to do that until they're all 4 star. And then all of them to 5 stars. Uh, for the specialties... Don't upgrade the specialties on the generals that are going to be recycled because you're not going to use that. So in the case of Herald 1 stars where you're going to recover your blood of Ares, 
don't put any specialties into them because you're going to lose them. Catherine doesn't get any extra debuffs from specialties, so that's a good thing with her. You don't need to worry about that. Jackson, Nero, and Sixty, they definitely do need their specialties. Those are pretty important for them. In terms of defense, duty, or sub-generals, uh, it's most cost-effective to upgrade your defense general to five stars first. And then you should do the recommended duty general upgrades, which I'll link that video. You should go watch that one. I did a similar blood to buff ratio for all the duty generals and my recommended upgrades on them. So watch that one. Do those upgrades first. They're going to be more cost effective. And then once you're done with that, then you should start working on your subsidy generals. Now there are still some situations where you might want to go a little bit further with the duty generals than what I recommended in the video. Like if we look at the blood to the ratios here, we can see some of these are pretty outrageous once we get higher up. Like looking at 30, 35, which if we compare it to the duty gens, the spreadsheet's pretty much the same. But we can see generally there are some that have about equal to these. So in some cases there might be duty generals that would be better upgraded past these recommended upgrade points before you work on your subs depending on which sub-generals you're using. So it's very dependent on your specific strategy and how you're going to do it. These spreadsheets are, they're just a tool for you to use that's going to help you out. So that's pretty much all I have for today. If y'all found this video useful, if you're going to use these spreadsheets, maybe leave a like. If you have any questions about this, leave a comment. I try to answer most comments in a timely manner. So I'll catch you on the next one.